coastal reefs mean to our sea environment. It's a wet, gray morning in the Florida Keys, but the tropical rain isn't stopping our group from setting out on an underwater adventure. I'm aboard a dive boat heading to a site about six miles off Key Largo. We're gearing up to be the first to experience South Florida's newest and biggest artificial reef, the SS Spiegel Grove. Doc Schweinler, our skipper, is one of the businessmen behind the Spiegel Grove project. I think the community felt that we really needed to have something special here that set us apart from, from the other dive destinations. The Spiegel Grove is a retired Navy ship that was intentionally sunk back in May. The 47-year-old vessel was plucked from the rusting ghost fleet in Virginia's James River and brought here to South Florida to give the region's economy a shot in the arm. Well, we believe that we'll bring at least 50,000 additional divers into the community each year, which means uh, approximately $14 million in additional revenue to the area. But getting here has been a long haul. There were years of environmental assessments and cleaning. Then the Spiegel Grove sank prematurely. Even worse, upside down. Salvage teams had to brave treacherous conditions to roll her onto her side. Then the ship started leaking oil. Crews fixed that problem, and finally, eight years after the effort first began, the vessel is ready for divers. Big step. On the way down, it slowly becomes visible, a mass of metal sitting on the sandy bottom about 130 feet down. She's lying on her starboard side with stacks, compartments, pipes, and platforms jutting out. At 510 feet long and 90 feet wide, she's the largest vessel ever sunk to make a reef. This ship is just so big, you can't see it all in one dive. For example, here I am at about 80 feet. This is the port side up towards the bow. Essentially, there's about 400 feet of ship behind me that I can't even see. While she may be the biggest artificial reef, she's certainly not the only one. In fact, artificial reefs now dot Florida's undersea landscape. Dozens of ships, like this one seized by customs officials, have been sent to the bottom to become dive destinations. But the theory is, is that you'll have these reef organisms settle on these hard, stable surfaces and develop into a, what would mimic a natural reef community. Brian Flynn runs Miami-Dade's artificial reef program. He says apart from luring divers, an artificial reef also draws an array of marine life. It provides them with shelter, uh, gets them out of the, out of the current, uh, usually bait fish will also aggregate around it, so they start to draw in the predators. So you almost immediately, you'll start to get an aggregation of fish around these ships. Proponents of artificial reefs also argue that they help preserve the marine environment by taking pressure off natural reefs, by attracting divers away from fragile living coral. That sounds logical, but not everyone's convinced. We have some concerns about whether or not they're going to alter the natural environment and the fish population. So we have to look at it very objectively. But if it will take pressure off the natural reefs, then I think it's going to be a useful tool. Back at the Spiegel Grove, divers are running out of air and time. Organizers describe this as a fantastic opportunity for all divers, but I can't help but think this is not a place for novices. As you swim along the hull, you can easily find yourself well below 100 feet and battling some pretty strong currents as well. 
Still, by the time we get back to the docks, the sun is starting to peek through the clouds, and my fellow divers are raving about the experience. The magnitude of it and, you know, the fact that it finally got to where it needed to be is pretty cool. It was just stupendously wonderful. It was awesome. It, it was, was awesome? Very large. <laughs> Didn't get very far around it, but it was uh, good. Everyone else should do it. That's what people here in the Florida Keys are hoping for. Crowds of eager underwater explorers coming down to tackle the old warship. Based on the response so far, it seems to me that there'll be no shortage of divers following in our footsteps, all hoping that the man-made attractions here will complement South Florida's natural beauty.